the economics of demand and supply. If it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. It needs education. It needs passion. It needs commitment, not just motivation. You, you know, you need to be motivated internally. You need to be curious about the thing that you're learning. If you're doing it just to get rich, you're going to get way bored way before you know you ever actually get the opportunity to get your first paycheck. Welcome to Open Learners, a podcast that tells the stories of learners all over the world who use MIT's open courseware. I'm Emmanuel Limikasigazi, an open learner myself from Kampala, Uganda, in East Africa. And I'm Michael Jordan Pilgrim, an open learner from Memphis, Tennessee. Hey, Emmanuel. Hi, Michael. It's good to be back. This is our third episode. I'm very excited. Emmanuel, you know, today's learner is Nadar Aletawi. Nadar is from Jordan and is currently living in Dubai. Oh, nice. And Michael, Nadar is actually someone you've had the opportunity to work with outside of OCW. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. I met Nadar through the Micro Masters in Finance program, and I stayed in touch with him throughout that process. Once he graduated undergrad, I knew we needed someone with his quantitative skills at BondClick, so I recruited him to come work for me at BondClick. Amazing, amazing. Uh, Because one of the reasons we wanted to start this podcast was to showcase that OCW has the potential to be more than just an online learning platform. It is a tool to build global communities. And Nadal's story is a perfect example to include in our first season because it does exactly that. Exactly. I think the power of the internet and MIT OpenCourseWare is that superpower of networking to connect with people all over the world, unlike you. And before even getting his current internship, Nadar was already following a really inspiring path. He's been passionate about finance since he was a teenager, but some life circumstances prevented him from really diving into his studies before he discovered MIT's open learning resources. He started OpenCourseWare in 2020 at home in Jordan while he was struggling to balance high school with 19-hour shifts at a falafel restaurant. That's dedication. In the four years since he started his open learner's journey, Nadar has completed a micromasters in finance. He has taken a number of OCW courses in topics like statistics, coding, programming, calculus. I mean, it's just amazing. MIT OCW and MIT MicroMasters are both open learning programs from MIT, but they are quite different and complementary to each other. So with OCW, a learner has access to materials from thousands and thousands of MIT courses for self-paced learning across just about any discipline, all free, all online. I've used some of these resources myself. They're amazing. So when a learner wants to focus specifically on getting a professional and academic credential in a hot topic that they like, say finance, say tech, say, you know, then there you can take a sequence of online courses through the MITx MicroMasters program to get that credential that you're looking for. Yeah, Nadar is super impressive. I'll let Nadar tell the rest of his story himself, but I will say he finds himself in a completely different place from where he started. So let's get into it. Here is our conversation with Nadar al Itawi from Jordan. So I'm Nadar. I'm from Jordan. I'm 23 years old. I started my education journey and passion for, for my career, which is finance. When I was about 15, I used to watch you know, like random YouTube videos about Warren Buffett and how he invests and, and stuff like that. And then when I was going through high school, I just had a, a bit of trouble finishing it due to you know circumstances at home and financial issues. So I was actually working a couple of uh, you know different jobs, minimum wage jobs, falafel restaurant, you know stuff like that. Then as soon as I finished high school, while I was working those jobs, I got into university. And as soon as I got into university, I started discovering the various platforms that MIT has to endorse open and free education across the globe. So. That would be in, I think, September of 2020, during the pandemic. And I found first MIT on edX. I found the MicroMasters program in finance. And I found, you know, OCW, MIT OpenCourseWare. And I started delving into very, very, you know, a lot of various topics, calculus, statistics, finance. The most special thing for me about 
um, the MIT MicroMasters program and the community that MIT fosters online is that you get to meet um, students from all around the world uh, who have the same passion as you, who's trying to learn the same essential skill that you are trying to learn. Every week, I would you know meet someone, we chat up online, and you know my the, the friend list that I made throughout that uh, program continued to grow. And I some of them I met in person, some of them I'm yet to meet in person, <laughs> like you, Mike and Emmanuel. And after I finished that program, I became a teaching assistant and interacted more with a lot of the students at MIT, community teaching assistant for the MicroMasters program. And you know that's when opportunities started coming in. All right, let me, let me ask one question just to get us contextualized within your journey. So, you know, you said you started finding these resources around September 2020. That year during the pandemic, where were you? What were you thinking about? What was your daily life like at that point in time? You know, I would wake up at like 5 a.m., go to my job in the Flaffle restaurant at 6 and, you know, work for 19 hours a day. And I was slowly doing high school at the time. And once I finished, I had a bit of free time. I quit my job and I decided that I want to focus on my education. So I was free. I had a couple of months before my bachelor's started in September, around the same time that the, or October, around the same time that I started the MicroMasters program. It felt advanced. You know, it's graduate level and I didn't even enter my bachelor's and I had problems, you know, with my high school. So I wasn't confident that I would be able to finish the program. But thankfully, you know, after 10, 20, 30 hours a week of studying for MIT <laughs> exams, I, I was lucky enough to finish the program. And, you know, that you know, really helped me gain a lot of confidence in my skills and abilities. And it helped me, you know, in my undergraduate studies and helped me in other, you know, finance specific programs such as CFA and the FRM. Going from just graduating high school to tackling graduate level work is like no small feat. If you feel comfortable sharing, what were some of the obstacles or problems you were having during your high school education that you were over, able to overcome? Yeah, it, it definitely was. And, you know, at the time, my confidence was, you know, as I said, was too low. And the biggest problem I had was just a lot of it was, you know, family issues. Uh, my dad had lost his business. We had to sell our house and find a new one. He went bankrupt, unfortunately. And that just caused a lot of stress and sort of havoc in my personal life. So I became just a little bit isolated, trying to, you know, work so I can be able to support myself and my family. And... I didn't have the mental capacity to to focus on high school. Plus, you know, like when when you put it in the you know normal context of yeah, like this is high school. This is you know you, you gotta finish these you know topics and pass those courses. It was pretty boring. I, you know, I wasn't interested in it really. But when I started studying for MIT, you know, it seemed like this out of world you know higher class education, worldwide graduate level course. It's really intensive and really hard. It, it aligned with, you know, my passion, my curiosity, and I was able to push through that hard work. You know, all this happened September 2020 with the lockdown. I would like to touch a bit about that. I guess what I want to know is how were you as a human being and your interactions and the people around you changed when your life before you met OCW and the resources and then your life after? how you used to inter interact with the environment, the people around you, your family, close friends. You know, throughout my whole life, I had just, you know, a lot of free time that I would waste on average stuff, Netflix, shows, movies, you know, playing games and, uh, <laughs> and, and stuff like that. But when, when I started the MIT program, I was like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Like this is, this material is very hard. This material is very engaging. And it was during lockdown, so everyone was, you know, already staying home. There's, there was not much to do outside of home, which was, you know, a blessing, honestly, in my case. All of that time home and sort of isolation from my my environment and and, and friends and family that that was already happening in place. I I put that time and dedication into right just just finishing that program, and uh, because of how hard it 
the program was and how challenging it was and the the reward once once you finish you know a quiz or a problem set and, and you hit that check button and you get the green mark it was very gratifying it was very rewarding and that became you know like seeking knowledge and just the, the gratification of learning new things became an essential core part of my personality where now all i want to do is just you know stay in home stay- Stay home, stay on my laptop, continue learning stuff online and gain new skills and gain new. So, you know, maybe there was already a lot of isolation going on in the world. And that has, you know, helped me gain discipline to my career, to my education and to the things I want to accomplish. Did that discipline that you cultivated over this learning journey, you know, translate into other aspects of your life? Did it inspire others in your close circle? Did you even talk about it with people in your close circle or was it more just a online <laughs> thing? Oh yeah. Now now like my friends, you know, can't can't hear enough about, you know, they have had enough about my MIT passion and story and journey. I don't shut up about it. There was a lot of people um, that I've talked to on the program. Some people, you know, that, that reached out to me randomly on, on LinkedIn, on the internet after seeing, you know, these certificates and they would have a bunch of questions and we'd hop on a call and we'd talk about the program. And a lot of my personal friends as well and people I met in uni started taking the MicroMasters and the finances specifically. And like they would go through the courses and, you know, uh, they'd admit me on their progress. And it changed me, it changed a lot of people around me who are interested in finance. Was there any instructors that really inspired you in the programming? And if they did, why? You know, who, who were the professors and why did they inspire you? Um, you know, all of the professors on, on that program were great and, and they were all inspiring and they all had their own unique way of teaching. But, you know, you know what? My, my favorite was uh, Igor, Professor Igor Medvedev. It was the first course I, I was starting. It even started a little bit before my bachelor's and was graduate level. And I would do the lectures and they would seem very, very, very hard. But then, you know, there's a, like a recitation section after each week and chapter where Professor Igor Medvedev would start from the very basic, you know, blocks of, of math and, and the equations and finance. And, you know, we would build up more complex exercises as, as, as we go in the journey. So, just those three citations, <laughs> and you know, I probably wouldn't have passed, you know, the first few, few courses without them and how simple he made them seem. Did you ever imagine that you would get this type of educational experience from your, I'm presuming like your living room? I don't know where you studied, um, but like how did, how did uh, open educational resources, you know, not only change your trajectory, but like how you think about access and opportunity globally and like, where do you see it going in the future? Yep. Well, it it really it really democratized education. Just from me, from you know Jordan working minimum wage job in in a country that that is you know not doing great economically, I had access to the best education in, in the whole world, and that education that I got manifested in me getting jobs and and working remotely with with companies in New York or Arizona or. In Jordan or in Dubai. Um, so now we're in a much more global atmosphere where after also COVID happened, work started being remote and you know people started being more collaborative online. Um, so I think you know anyone with, with a phone and an internet connection and a passion now can can you know just pick up the resources that MIT has and the plenty of available online education in general resources that are free on the internet and, you know, learn any scale you want. You mentioned finance a lot. Do you have a love for finance, like naturally, or it's just something, you know, it's where the money is, it's what I'm going to do. It's definitely where the money is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but my passion for finance started when I was 15. I was, I was just like always curious about how um you know financial markets function how the global economy can function you know when when i was six or whatever I w- whenever i would get like a huge bag of sh- chips i would sell it to my friends um at school <laughs> or siblings i was always just interested in you know business in general especially finance and learning about the global economy yeah that's a nice one i, I was like that too. I used to sell sweets to my <laughs> classmates <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
So I understand. So you are specifically looking for finance things when you found OCW. Yep. And ever since then, have you taken anything out of your circles, maybe something outside finance? Yeah, definitely. Um, I did a lot of calculus. I did a lot of probability and statistics, programming, Python, and just other skills. So because I want to become like a quant, I had to learn everything about technology, learn everything about finance, and sort of mix them together. And MIT was the perfect place to do that because no other university in my country had you know, that kind of wide range of you know, offerings where you can choose in one degree for the all of you know, these different topics that I wanted to study. Nice. So of all the things you've studied, I know I personally have studied a lot. I would take the most impactful for me, I think, were the AI lectures I've watched. What would you say, first of all, is the most impactful and then the one that kind of had the most impact in the real life. Like when I took this course called disqualification is when I like went down the path I'm on now. I think the course is named Fi- uh, Modern Financial Theory by uh, Professor Andrew Liu. I enrolled in the MicroMasters program, but just before it had started, I thought I would prepare myself with that course. During that course, during the time that they were filming those lectures, the big financial crisis was happening in real time. So you'd see a lot of you know, meaningful interactions from the, the MBA students that were taking the course and Professor Andrew Liu and all of the specific questions they would ask during that period. It was such a coincidence, uh, a very, you know, maybe happy or lucky coincidence that they started following the course just when the financial crisis was happening. So how did you how did you end up in the finance internship? So the first job I got as a quantitative analyst was with a startup in Jordan. And it was actually in my second year of bachelor's, just when I finished the MIT program. And after a bit of time of being a community teaching assistant, I worked with them for around six months, you know, building models for crypto trading. And after that, I, I met Mike <laughs> and he introduced me to an opportunity uh, with, with a company you know, that works in, in New York and on, on Wall Street and in the bond market. And you know, it took a couple of months of preparation and courses and education uh, that, that Mike suggested. And after I finished those, that's how I landed my current internship. Yeah, and that that was that was a lot kinder than the actual journey. <laughs> so so you ended up graduating during that time from your undergrad and you know, so my previous role was at a financial technology startup primarily focused on, you know, consolidating corporate bond information. Uh, Nadar had been a standout student and teacher associate. Is that what they Called teaching it. assistant, yeah. Teaching assistant, teaching assistant, and the MicroMasters program. We both started, I think, at the same time, both September 2020. So we were the same cohort of MicroMasters students. And um, as some of you may know, I, that's when I got my job at uh, the financial technology startup. So my coursework sort of fell off because it became real life work for me. You know, I didn't end up passing a single course. I don't think in that micro masters. Meanwhile, Nadar had been killing every single one. Um, (laughs) You know, we would touch base every three months for a little while there. And then once he graduated, that was kind of when the program really opened up for him when he started working for us and solving some of these hard problems. Nice. Adia, you mentioned something about people and how among the best things that OCW enabled you to access or to do was connect with all these people from around the world. And for you, have an actual testimony. You connected with someone, a fellow learner, who that led to an internship. I would like you to touch a bit about, you know, you've met all these great people. Uh, you've gotten an internship part of it. You're in Dubai. But I want you to use your own words and paint for us your life after OCW? A huge portion of my life is, is owed to OCW as well. I did a lot of programs, not just the MicroMasters in Finance. I, I did a FRM Part 1, I did a CFA Level 1, and I did all of those with my bachelor's sometime while working as a quant and one time in real estate even, under three years. I, I didn't even know about the FRM or CFA, right? I, I didn't even know like what skills I need to to learn 
I didn't know about you know big data and, and how to do data analytics and data engineering and, and PySpark and all of these things. So the people that I met had all kinds of different careers. Some of them were biologists, some of them were physicists, some of them were senior vice presidents at major insurance companies and quants, and some of them had already had PhDs. And just meeting those people and having those conversations is what you know broadened my my vision. I learned what I need to learn through the conversations that I've had, through the people that I connected with at MIT. It wasn't just about, you know, the the material is all there. You can learn anything online, but you need to know what to learn in order to be successful. And, you know, it it wasn't just like, you know, someone telling me that this program is great and I would go to it. I have a friend, for example, his name is Devin. Uh, we we studied together FRM and CFA, like every single chapter. Like we would hop on a Zoom call uh, <laughs> and, you know, we would spend six hours together solving questions and, you know, learning stuff. Uh, we did that for the MicroMasters. We did that for CFA. We did that for FRM. And I had a lot of, you know, many more friends that I, you know, had, you know, the pleasure of studying with and collaborating with. So I, I wouldn't have done it alone without, you know, the people and the community and the friendships that I have made that allowed me to survive right this this very you know challenging program and education journey that's that's really beautiful to think about that not only were you getting open educational resources by coursework material but you were getting access to a social capital that you could tap in that you could leverage you could leverage an executive's experience you know just because he's your classmate or she's your classmate right that, that that really is a beautiful thing, you know, and just just we asked this question of everyone that comes on the podcast. And it was uh, a question from Kurt Newton, the director of OpenCourseWare. If you had a magic wand, what would you add to OpenCourseWare? What would you add to the MicroMasters programs, any open educational resources? Well, I would add the whole degree of finance, you know, all of the curriculum, putting it online. I would do it. There is some applications in the program where you actually apply the theory and do regression and, and do what you learned in the class. More applied courses would be um, would be more, you know, appreciated and uh, specifically courses that are centered around collaboration. Uh, I've met a lot of students um, that, you know, went through six or nine months of the program and, you know, they've never been on a Zoom call with with another student, with a peer student, like they didn't network. So just maybe designing a program centered around collaboration would be a huge plus because, you know, I I had an amazing experience at uh, MIT. I think I made the most out of it. There's still more to learn and, and make more out of it. But a lot of students just, you know, didn't focus on socializing or, you know, didn't get the social experience that I've had. Just went in, opened the course, understood the material, did the quizzes and exams, and, you know, they they left out. It's not bad to do that, but I think it's more valuable to just, you know, increase the human touch, the human connection element. That's, that's really beautiful. Um, do you have anything, any message that you would want to share with your friends, your family, the world around you? If you have a dream, you know, just... Give it time. Stay dedicated. Stay passionate. Stay. Don't don't let your passion die out. Don't don't get turned down. Uh, you know, you know. Don't don't be too hard on yourself. Don't get turned down. Don't have doubts. Over the long run, if if you really just put the time, put the effort in, um, you will make your dreams come true. And you just need to you know get out there and show up every day. Um, if you show up every day and like if you do a little bit of work on your dream. With enough time, it's you know, it's it's more than just a possibility to to make it true. That that's what happened with me here. I remember having you know, dreaming of becoming a quantitative analyst on my LinkedIn bio when I just started out university three four years ago, and I thought it's a silly dream that that I would never achieve it. But you know, here I am being a quant in, in the finance industry. Wow, that was a full circle conversation. Uh, we followed Nadar from the start of his OCW journey as a struggling high school student, deep into his career as a quant analyst. Pretty amazing, if you ask me. From all this, what's your biggest takeaway from this conversation? I think my biggest takeaway is exactly what Nadar said in the last um, answer to the question was, 
if you have a dream, give it time, stay dedicated, stay passionate. Don't let your passion die out and just keep pursuing it until you achieve it. I conquer, I conquer. My biggest takeaway from all this is anyone can achieve this. We're hearing a story of someone who started out all the way from Jordan, didn't have much going for them, but they stayed dedicated, putting in hours, working insane hours at a restaurant, but still having time to come back and do all these resources, put in the time, put in the work, and it later paid off. You have someone from across the nation ending up working for a company that is across the seas in another continent and is now living in a different place. That is the power of what OCW gives you. That's the power of the community and the internet. To know that you can do it no matter where you're from, no matter where you start, you can access anyone on this planet from any corner of it and it's possible and OCW is giving everyone that power and that opportunity. And I want to say thanks to everyone for tuning into our conversation with Nadar. We will be back in two weeks with another story from a different learner in the global open courseware community. See you then. Open Learners is produced by Alexis Hot. Special thanks to the supporters and donors who make OCW possible. To learn more about MIT's open courseware and to check out the courses mentioned in this episode, Visit the OpenCourseWare website at ocw.mit.edu.